Welcome. In this session, we are going to introduce you to RStudio environment. You can download RStudio Cheat Sheets at the website rstudio.com resources cheat sheets. You can proceed to the website google.com where you can simply type in R Cheat Sheet and you will get the first link to download cheat sheets at RStudio website. Once you open the website, you can go to cheat sheets at RStudio. You can scroll to various cheat sheets available like data import cheat sheet, transformation cheat sheet, you have cheat sheet for Sparkler, R Markdown cheat sheets, you will have cheat sheets for R Studio IDE and the very first cheat sheet which we are looking for at the moment is to get the base R cheat sheet. The base R cheat sheet is available at contributed cheat sheets here and you can simply click and download base R. Once you get started with base R, you will be able to understand the basic R programming using R Studio. Once your download completes, you can open your base R cheat sheet and on the cheat sheet you can see that we can quickly get started with the help section. We can proceed with installation of libraries. We can interact with working directories. Later we can proceed to vectors, some functions and there are a lot of things like programming section where you can get started with loops, while loops, statements, functions and a lot of stuff is available. So let's get started. We'll go to our studio and we'll get started with the help section first. In order to get a help on any of the function, we can also make use of question mark and we can simply provide in the name of the function. Once we use question mark Q, on the right hand side in the help section, you can see that we get information about terminate an R session. We'll get the usage, we'll get the arguments, detailed description of the command and at the very bottom we can have some examples as well which can help us make use of R Studio in a better way. So we are going to clear screen at the moment using control L and once we do that we are going to get started with some basic mathematical operations on R Studio. Let's say we can perform basic mathematical operations like addition, we can perform subtraction, we can perform multiplication, we can perform division and many stuff like this. Once you are done with mathematical operations like addition subtraction, we, you can proceed to mathematical operations like square root and in case if you want to search for the square root first, you can make use of question mark and you can provide the name of the square root. On the right hand side you'll get miscellaneous mathematical functions where, going, where you will get information about absolute information and square root information and you can get some examples as well. So let's say if I would like to compute the square root of 81 I can simply type in 81 and I'm going to get the square root value is 9. If I want to get an absolute value of 10.20 or something I'm going to get that something like absolute value for this value is this. So now what next we can do is we can execute these functions and we can store values as well. So let's say I would like to assign value to a and let's say this is going to be an integer. Once you put that value as an integer here on the right hand side in global environments you can see that you'll get a list of variables available and which has some data in it. Once we do that, let's say we are going to assign some value to 20 and it's being updated here on the right hand side section. We can perform mathematical computations on variables as well and we can store these mathematical computations in another variable like C. So here you can perform mathematical operations as well. Once we clear the screen, now what next we can do? After performance of mathematical operations, we can perform create lists, vectors and we can do a lot of stuff. So in order to do that, I am going to make use of a combine function and what this C does, it combine values into a vector or list and how we can do that, we are going to make use of C function and we are going to provide in some values. In case if you want to see some examples, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can have some examples here. So let me just take you to some sample examples. So let's say I would like to make a vector V and this vector is going to store some values like c1, 2, 10, 30, 40 or something. So v has been stored at the moment. 
and on the right hand side you can see that v stores values from index 1 to 5 and the values are 1 2 10 30 and 40 if you want to print the value of v out here we can simply put in v and we can get the values out now what next we can do is in case we want to perform some mathematical multiplication operations on this vector we can do it something like this let's say i would like to multiply every individual element within the vector with 2 so we can simply do that and we'll get some values like 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4, 2 10s are 20, 2 30s are 60 and something and so on so you can create vectors and lists in R Studio as well and in case if you want to proceed with vectors on the cheat sheet you can see that we have a list of vectors available wherein we have the information to create the vectors we can perform some sequential operations and repetitions on these vectors as well so let's just perform that so we are going to make use of help sequential first once we perform the sequential help what you can simply do is we can provide the function here and once the example gets executed you can sequence generate you can generate regular sequences and in order to do that you can make use of sequence function and you can provide in values like from value to value and a lot of stuff so let's say we are going to make use of sequence values and let's say I want to generate a sequence from 1 to 10 so once we quickly do that you can see that we are going to get a sequence from 1 to 10 now in case if you want to give some incrementation operator the increment of the sequence so what we can do is let's say if I want to generate a sequence from 2 to 10 and that should be separated or incremented by 2 so we can provide it something like this so we'll get something like 2 4 6 8 10 can be done in case if you want to store these sequential values into something we can generate this sequence and let's say I would like to generate it to 2 to 10 and it should be incremented by 2 and that can be done and now you can see that vector v has been replaced with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 or something. So now what next we can do is we can make use of more functions like repetitions and what we can do is once we have to specify the function repetitions we can replicate elements of vectors and lists and in order to do that we can repeat x to as many times as we want. So let's say I would like to repeat a value 10 5 times and that can be done so these are some of the mathematical operations which we can perform on vectors you can go to your cheat sheet and you can perform many of these operations as well so let's say in case if we have a vector we can sort that out we can reverse it we can get the tables or we can see counts of values we can see unique values and let's just perform that so what we can do is let's say we're going to have a vector v which is a combination of some values like 20 10 4 3 5 and so on and now what we want to do we want to perform a sort operation on it so in order to perform sort operation i would like to get the help first you can see that we can perform sorting or ordering vectors and in order to do that we are going to perform something like this sort and we are going to pass in the value v here and once the v gets sorted you can see that we are going to get a sorted list in this I am going to sort v and I am going to store that in s and we can simply do that so once we have got the s information available here you can see that s contains a sorted list in case if you want to change the order by default decreasing is false you can turn the decreasing on as well so let's just try the decreasing order of sort as well in order to do that we can make use of the sort function we are going to sort and we are going to provide the value decreasing to true so once we do that we execute that so d is going to get an element which will be sorted in the reverse order and in case if you want to print d on the console here you can quickly print that out so we can perform these functions in case if you want to count the elements within v or d we can simply go for table d and uh, we'll get we'll get a tabular representation and what next we can do is we can get the frequency using this table and we have many functions like we can see the unique values or in case if you want to reverse that we can use reverse function as well so we can make use of reverse and we can put in v and we can print the statements out 
and the stuff can be done. So now what next you can see that Art Studio is very comprehensive and the cheat sheets make your work a lot easier and in case if you have the elements let's say if you want to perform the fourth element and if you want to print that out or something so we can do that stuff let's say I want to get the fourth element of the vector so I get it something like three or something which has been stored on my vector V and this is the stuff so what next we can do we can proceed to further mathematical operations which we can perform on our studio in our next session thank you for watching